Hey, I'm John Thielen. Today I'm Fish Head. We're out in North Dakota and my friend Jason Feldner and I are gonna do some walleye fishing and this is some fun fishing right here. We're chasing some walleyes up in really, really shallow water. It's early spring and I'll tell you what, there's some great fishing in spots like this. Stay right where you're at. We're gonna show you exactly how to do this today on Fish Head. that there he, he? finally took oh, it down. He yep. took it down. Yeah. He was just swimming the other way with it. I was watching him go. Oh now he came back up. Yeah, he's still oh, got it. Goes. He's just sucking on it. Got him. Feels like an eye Jace. Good deal. That's the exact start we're looking for here. Wow. Well, little guy. Little guy, but you know what? He'll eat great. Look at that. That's exactly what we're out here chasing today. And we're doing something a little bit different. We're out on a prairie lake in North Dakota. We're fishing in a way that most people don't think of out here. Most of the time people, when they think of prairie lakes, they think of pitching a crank or throwing a jig and a plastic or something. Well, what we're doing today is we're bobber fishing. There's a couple of reasons we're doing it. Number one is it's spring. The water's still not really warmed up yet. So these fish aren't super, super aggressive and they're not chasing really aggressive presentations yet. And the other reason is these fish are in here shallow and they're eaten, but because we can run a couple lines in here, a piece, we're able to really cover ground well and put ourselves in a position with bobbers that these fish that aren't running around feeding super aggressively, walleyes like that one right there, they'll come across this bait that we're putting out there and they'll eat and they'll eat pretty much all day long when you fish like this at this time of the year. Let's throw him in, he'll be sure. a good dinner fish for tonight. That's a great way to start right there. There's a few tips and tricks to what we're doing today and we'll show you a little bit more about it as we go because this is a really fun bite. And man, I'll tell you what, this is an easy bite as well, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is and it's fun. a nice fish. You know, you get such a mix of fish in a situation like this too. You get little ones in here, you got big ones in here, and this one does look like a better one. And then the other thing you'll have in here too, you'll have pike. I mean, the bottom line is they're all in here eating the same thing. So you'll end up with a, a huge bunch of different game fish in here and they'll all be eating those minnows, they'll all be messing around in those bugs. They're, they're just the whole life the whole lifeblood of the system is going on right in here right now. Boy, he took it away, didn't he? Oh. We, we weren't really paying a whole lot of attention. They're messing around with a couple other things in the boat here and taking care of a tangle. And, you know, we just leave the bales open a lot of times so that when a fish does hit it, if that happens, they can just keep going. Oh, that's a nice eye right there. Oh, yeah. Look at that one. That's a great fish. That is an awesome fish. He get himself unhooked for us, yes. too, didn't he? Yes, sir. Look at this fish. I'm going to show you this walleye and then we'll. We'll also talk a little bit about what we're using, if we can get this guy settled down. That's one of the things too. These fish come out of the shallow water. I mean, you can see the weeds on his side here. They come out of the shallow water and they're just so tuned up. That's a great fish there, bud. Let me throw him back. Let me show you exactly what we're using because it's a really simple setup. There she goes. This setup is, is really so simple though. And there's a couple of things that are new about it though. Jason's using a, the new Lindy Live Bait Jig. And this is a neat jig because it hangs perfectly horizontal and you can use it for pretty much anything. You can put it under a slip bobber, you can cast it, but this thing is designed for live bait fishing. It's got a big wide gap hook and it makes it so that when a fish hits it, you're gonna get a hook in him every time. Then the other thing we're doing is we're using a fill wobble bobber. And I don't think there's anything better than these wobble bobbers because what they do, number one, they're really easy to see. Number two, they got a brass crown in both ends. So when you cast this, it just goes a mile. I mean, you can, you can fire this thing a long ways out there. And then the other thing is, 
printed right on the side is the weight. And if you've got the weight printed on the side, you know exactly what you can put down here for a split shot and a jig. So you look at Jason's setup here, we know that he can hold up a quarter ounce. Well, he's got a 16th and a 16th, so he's got that quarter ounce right there. One of the things that I think is really important too is those fish are a long ways in there, but we're able to catch them for one reason. <laughs> and that reason is real simple, isn't it? Correct. We can take these things and you can literally cast them 50 yards and that is key in the shallow water because you don't want to fish next to the boat because the fish might be a little spooky of the boat. So we can launch them to where the fish are. We just make long casts and that's how we're being productive today. Yeah. And, and you know, the other thing is you don't want to take your boat in this shallow water, especially in soft bottom and motor right through where the fish are to get set up and be, be comfortable with it. Because here's what's gonna happen. You stir up that bottom, you chase some fish out. You might see me do it sometimes in rocks because those fish will come right back. But in this muddy bottom, you'll chase them out and it could take them a long time to come back or they'll slide right down the shoreline. So being as far away from those fish as you can be makes a big difference. That wobble bobber allows us to do it because we can just fire them in there. That one feels like the right kind. He's bouncing his head around like a walleye. Look at this cluster we got going back here. I, got this all, I mean, this is how fast these fish are biting when you can just dump right in on them like we're doing today. I mean, I've got stuff all tangled up and we're just catching eater-sized walleyes one after another here. And I think that's probably one of the neatest things about this time of the year in the Dakotas is these fish, I mean, they're just flat out hungry. I mean, that's another great fish for the well right there. And we've been just picking them off one after another. But the other thing that happens is this water that we're fishing, it's warmed up. And when you get in water that's finally starting to warm up, this is warming up first. There's deeper water out here that's probably got fish on it, but it's not cranking yet. This is warming up, the bugs are hatching, that circle of life starts happening. So if you get a chance to get out in any of these situations, and, and there's prairie lakes across the Midwest. I mean, they're all over. This situation exists in a lot of places. You can go out and you can bobber fish them. Leave some of that other fast moving stuff at home. Find those little schools by moving until you find them. And when you find them, just plop back on them one after another because you can do what we're doing today. And this is about as easy a fishing as you can get, isn't it? It is it? awesome. Very That's enjoyable. Great.